Hi there! This is the Opel Mocha 2022. And honestly, guys, when you look at it, such a beautiful car. Especially this paint color. It's called the Green Mamba. You know the Mamba. It's just like a very venomous snake from Western Africa. Anyways, this has been completely refreshed. It doesn't look like anything like the old Mokas. And I can tell you guys, it may be one of the most beautiful or one of the best styles and crossovers out there. Although I do prefer the T-Rock, but I love this one. It's just really nice. Now, Opel started the Mocha in 2012 and in 2016 it was called the Mocha X. In America it was called the Buick Ancora and in the UK it was called the Vauxhall. I don't know why the UK, they always have some different names, but Maybe, yeah, sometimes, not always, but yeah, it was called the Vauxhall. And in 2020, it was the second generation of the Mocha that came out when it was under PSA. And right now, they're all under Stellantis, which explains why this car shares a lot of things, like the whole chassis platform with the Peugeot 2008 and the Citroën C4. And by the way, there's an electric version of this, it's called the Mocha E. And uh, yeah, let me tell you more about it. Interior, exterior, performance, how it drives, and uh, yeah, let's start. Now, as the paint color's name says, the Green Mamba, which is a venomous snake. So as do the design language of this car tries to show you, which is the Mocha is very cute. It's just a tiny car when you look at it from the side, but when you look at it from the front, you would see that this new design language we just tried to imply on you this very wide and muscular look. I mean, let's start with the day running lights. These L-shaped form, it gives you this very menacing look. I mean, if you look at this car at night, it, you would think that, what's that, you know? It's just very aggressive styling and uh, yeah, style. So now there's something else that's that's a little bit weird. It's not weird, actually. I mean, uh, these engineers, of course, they have thought about it, but the grill over here is just, it has this very nice feel of it, and it has those nice shapes inside. But I would see this, this type of grill maybe in a fully electric car. I don't know why it is here in a petrol car, although you do have vents. And uh, I was pretty surprised that they actually really, really thought about the aerodynamic of the car with those functional vents, which lets the air come in and get out from the other side. Now, the side of the car. As you can see, the car is all green, but it has those accentuating of a gloss black color all over the car, on the grill, on the wheels, on the roof panel, which it is a floating roof design, which I really love on crossovers. And you do have this angular C pillar, which reminds me a lot of the T-Rock. I don't know why I always mention the T-Rock, maybe because it was my first review on the channel. And uh, yeah, I just have a lot of good and bad memories with that car. Yeah. You do have this plasticky trim. Although I wish this was in gloss black because the whole car is in gloss black, the side mirrors, the roof. I don't know why they let it go on plastic. Even the wheel fenders. Wheels, 17 inch. And uh, yeah, they look pretty cool. Now there's something that I really like about uh, the PSA group car is even if it's a basic car, it's not a normal keyless entry and exit. Actually, if you get away from the car, like now, it closes and it has this very funny and funky sound. Beep, beep. And now if I get close, it unlocks, which, I mean, it's, I'm not gonna say it's a little bit useless, but it's just cool to have this feature, you know? It's just a little bit different than just taking out the handle and taking out, pulling out the handle. Yeah. Now, the back. 
it has the same design language as the front, which is this wide and muscular style. I really love these tail lights. They just respect the same design language as the front lights with this L shape. You do have the indicator over here and the brake lights. I like how they just made the logo in gloss black with this spaced out name, Mokka. Now, let me tell you something about Mokka. Mokka derives from an Arabic name called Maha, which is a very famous port in Yemen where coffee was first discovered in Ethiopia and they started importing it to Yemen. And since the German have their input on the name with their own language, so instead of saying Maha in Arabic, they said Mokka. But basically, it's just the same M O C H A Mokka, like coffee Mokka, which is, you know, the regular coffee that we drink at Starbucks or Costa. And uh, yeah, Mokka, remember that. The boot, sadly, it's manual, it's not electronic. And you do have 350 liters of space, which is very decent. I mean, do you really need more than that? I mean, if you do, you can just push the seats and you would have around 1,105 liters, which is very good as a number. Now, again, we really wish this was in gloss black because this is in gloss black and then plastic, gloss black, plastic. I wish just if the whole thing was in gloss black, it would have been just a little bit cooler. And you have this really cool uh, formula-ish, formula-ish, formula formula stein whatever how they call it but this red light now there's something else that i really like about the mocha is i don't know if this is true maybe i'm wrong i need to rectify this information apparently the mocha is basically a peugeot 208 gt or an opel corsa because you know these companies are sisters now and they're owned by stellantis they share the same platform as the opel corsa or the 208 but they're lifted and there's something, I don't know why they did this, but I don't know if you've seen the Opel Corsa review. The exhaust is literally the same exhaust as the Opel Corsa or the Peugeot 208. Same size, same shape, and in chrome. It's just, I don't know if this is supposed to be good, but it's cool. Because these days, guys, we got used to have crossovers with fake exhaust. Petrol engines, but always, always fake exhaust. And having these, these days, it's becoming more of a rare species. So, yeah, we need to glorify these. Now, interior. All right, the steering wheel, the steering wheel is all leather. I really like that they made the bottom flat just to make it a little bit more sporty. We have all the buttons over here, which is the volume, you control the tracks, cruise control. And yeah, you do have a speed limiter. And you have these plastic paddle shifters. Now, a good thing about this car is you do have... Now, I wish if this was electronic too, but it's manual. You can push, pull, up and down. You have the full motion of a telescopic steering wheel, which is very useful. I hate when cars doesn't give you the push and pull option. It's just such a useful thing. I mean, I'm not a tall guy, but some people are tall and they need it. And some people are short and they need it. So, yeah, you do have this really great balance of the distance between your foot and the gas pedal on the brakes and the steering wheel. So, great job, Apple. There's something that I forgot to say at the uh, beginning, which this car is a pre-production car, actually. So, in the UE, you do have two model, two trims, sorry, the GS line and the Unlimited. Ultimate, sorry, not Unlimited. I don't know why I do have the Unlimited word. Ultimate line and the GS line and this since it's a pre-production it's a little bit of a mix between both the seats over here they're manually adjusted so you have six adjustment between pushing and pulling and up and down but the ultimate has the electric seats and let me tell you something too it has a massage feature so I'm really excited to try that other than that yeah it just a little bit plasticky, but it's fine. It's a great car. Something else that's cool about the Mocha is the piano black panel, which is 
it's all directed to the driver, which is really cool. Reminds me of a little bit of the Audi. I mean, the way it's designed. The infotainment system, it's from Peugeot. It's exactly the same one. You do have Apple CarPlay and uh, Android Auto, which is just the basic things that you actually need. And uh, both of them, this is 12 inch and this is 10 inch. Now on the GS line, which is the basic entry trim, this is seven inch and this is seven inch. Something else I really like also that you have knobs, which I do really hate when cars have a touch thing. It's just very annoying when you're like whenever you're driving and your hands are sweaty, you cannot even control it carefully. So even for the climate control, it's all knobs and you have a dual climate control system. Something a little bit funky, which is the center vent is huge. It's not like two separated vents. It's like just one piece and it's just big. And the center console is just, you do have all the practicality, like two cup holders, they're quite big. You have a small center storage over here, which is very decent. You can put your wallet, some stuff, your keys, and a wireless phone charger in the middle, which is pretty basic, but functional and practical. And a couple of USB inputs. Now, the back seats. That's where the Mokka gets a little bit disappointing. I mean, I was expecting a little bit more space over here. And like I said at the beginning, I'm not tall, I'm not short, I'm average at 180 centimeters. So I do barely have some knee space between me and the front seats, which is a little bit annoying. And uh, yeah, this just is a little bit of a downside. And the headroom is just, let's say, it's decent enough, but I do feel a little bit suffocated. And uh, yeah, you do have USB inputs and you don't have AC vents. That's why I was saying the back seat a little bit disappointing because right now, now it's 7 a.m. But if it was at 12 p.m. or like at any time during the day in Dubai, it would be like around 45, 46 degrees, which is, which, it's just very hot and I do really feel bad for the people who are gonna sit here with no AC vent. So the Opel Mocha drives very smooth and it's very comfortable. I mean the seats just hug you in a very nice way and the GS line it's a mix of fabric and leather a little bit of leather in the back and uh, in the ultimate trim they're all Alcantara. Now there's something weird I was expecting that this guy would have a four-cylinder or even maybe those really weird five cylinders like Volkswagen does. But apparently it is a three cylinder. It's a very cute engine. 1.2 liter producing around 133 horsepower and 230 Newton meter of torque, which is not bad. It's very decent. Although I wish it was a little bit tuned up. I mean, these are great numbers. It's a small car, but it's more than enough. I mean, when you press on the gas pedal, you do feel there's quite a punch into it. Not bad, yeah. The brakes, they're a little bit over stiff. I mean, they're good. If you wanna brake, there's like an emergency, they're good. But if you wanna go to a full stop, you have to slowly lick the brake pedal. I mean, it's a little bit aggressive. Whenever you're gonna just try to go on a full step, it's gonna do the little bit of a snap, which is a bit annoying. I mean, if you do have some passengers, they're gonna get a little bit annoyed from your brake. So you really have to get used to it to perfect it. You know, that smooth limousine driver, driving, 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 driver. I don't know what I'm saying. Noise isolation is great, the highway and in the city, you barely hear any noise. I mean, because Opel really focused on the aerodynamic of the car. So this is good. And I was quite surprised too with the uh, exhaust sound. It does, it does sound a little bit nice. I mean, it does sound very français, French, you know? It does sound like a Peugeot, actually. It does sound like a Peugeot 208 GT with a cute little exhaust. And of course, 
to make this car very smooth and to have a good acceleration, it has an eight-speed automatic gearbox, which does a pretty good job. It's very efficient. I mean, if I look at the cluster, it's written 12.6 kilometers per liter, which is a very good number. I mean, just very fuel efficient. Considering that the capacity of the fuel tank is around 44 liters. So let's say, give and take, the car would go up till 600 kilometers. Maybe a little bit more if you're a good driver and you're just going smooth on it. Now, this cute green Mamba car costs around 106,900 dirhams for the GS line. For the Ultimate line, it is around 116,900 dirham, an extra 10,000, let's say. I don't know. Would I pick this one? Maybe, maybe yes, maybe not. Um, do you guys like it or not? I mean, let me know your opinions down in the comments. And uh, yeah, hope you guys enjoyed this video and see you on the next one. Peace.